Hello guys, it's Crapful Tom and welcome to the channel. In this video I would like to help you all out there looking for a proper CPU upgrade for your pre-built brand PC. I'm quite a big fan of uh, Dell Optiplexes in general. At the moment I have two of them, an old uh, 755 version and a newer uh, 7020 series. Both of them are a very good base for tuning and, and customization. Though I have to mention they have a couple of drawbacks as well, especially with the proprietary connectors, the, the different layouts, pinouts, uh, connectors, whatever you have, cables, all can be real proprietary and a pain in the ass to, to replace or, or tune. And the, the further quirk is that this changes generation by generation. So for example, the, the old uh, Optiplex still has the 24 pin uh, PSU adapter, while the newer generation went for this 8 pin madness, which I still cannot understand. But anyway, so the video consists of two parts. The first, uh, in the first one, I will cover four things to consider during the selection of the actual upgrade. While in the second part you can you can see the upgrade procedure. There are tons of videos out there. This one will not be any special, so uh, I'm, I'm not promising you know anything. But uh, but uh, but you can look at that. So let's get into it. Okay. So the first thing to consider is the compatibility. That's the lists, and I, I presume it's the same with other manufacturers as well, and of OHP, uh, you name it. So they are listing the, the supported CPUs for the particular model and, and chassis version. As I mentioned before, I, I have now the, the Soptiplex uh, 755 uh, mini tower, which on paper supports a bunch of uh, Core 2 Duo plus two Core 2 Quad processors, the Q. Uh, 6600 and the Q6700. This, although, does not mean that you have to avoid other models. Uh, in fact, the, the fact that the, the, the quad-core processors are supported uh, really suggests that you can start experimenting with the newer generations like the Q8, the Q9 series as well. One very important uh, thing here is to go for the latest BIOS before you, you start the actual swap procedure. So this is the, the best you can do to ensure compatibility. The Optiplex 755 at the moment has the latest A22 BIOS version, which is still dated to 2013, but, but anyway, that's the best you can get at the moment. I did it before the swap and, and eventually it turned out pretty well. So uh, that's a very important point. And after you know doing the swap, you can just uh, head to the BIOS directly when you have the, the first post screen and check in the, in the CPU part if the new CPU is recognized properly by the, by the BIOS and the motherboard. And if it's done, then yeah, you are, you are good. Uh, good to go. Performance is definitely the main reason that triggers the upgrade need. My starting point was a E6550, which has a pretty poor performance compared to the Quad Core Brothers. I mainly wanted to use this rig for CSGO in an open configuration, so I started looking up the actual gaming experience with the Q series. Tools on the net give you the accessibility to tons of information. You can compare CPUs, uh, watch benchmarks, and uh, this can really be very helpful for the selection procedure. Going for the top tier CPU is not all the time the answer. Uh, you have to consider this, as, uh, uh, and you will see why in the, in the next chapter, basically. So the actual value of the CPU can be the, the real deciding factor here. Although these are not so expensive CPUs, even compared to the fairly old third of fourth Gen i5 or R7 CPUs, uh, 
but making the most out of your money is always a priority. Note that uh, shopping opportunities in your location may differ from mine, so always study what's available the closest to you. I made a comparison chart uh, combining the benchmark values of the CPUs and the actual local prices into an universal uh, value chart. The performance is very important, so I use the, the tricky formula where I uh, count with the, the benchmark squared, I, I divide it with the price and that brought clearly the Q4800 uh, uh, as the as the winner. You can see that uh, the, the Q9550 only provides approximately 10% performance upgrade but it almost costs three times the price of the Q8400. So I picked this one from a local seller uh, and actually it costs uh, less than 14 euros. As these brand pieces are not really designed for such modifications, you might hit the wall in a couple of cases when you, when you go for them. So thermal capabilities uh, is definitely high on this risk list. So let's see what I do, uh, or what I did to, to mitigate this risk. The Optiplex 755 series came with two types of heatsinks. The 65 watt uh, TDP CPUs are equipped with a solid uh, aluminum block, uh, while the 95 watt models came with a copper core heatsink. CPU seller also warned me uh, about this issue, but uh, I knew that I went for this uh, open configuration, so fresh air was uh, not an issue. And uh, I also applied uh, a push-pull configuration, so I was not really uh, concerned about this topic. I, I used uh, an Arctic MX, MX4 paste. Uh, I think it's uh, doing a, an overall good job, so uh, definitely recommended. And uh, as it turned out, eventually these two measures were, were really sufficient, so even under continuous stress test, the CPU was kept below 60, 65 uh, degrees Celsius and uh, gaming other CSGO never pushed it above the, the 50 uh, range. So great results. So the overall outcome really met my expectations. Now I can easily hit uh, 100 FPS or above uh, in CSGO on 1080p yet the system is as silent as it can be now let's go for the actual upgrade video i hope you found this information useful and see you next time